Okay, we're in section 59 now. And again, we're just plowing forward. Uh, we're getting closer and closer to the halfway mark. Whoops. Give me one second. We're getting closer and closer to the halfway mark. All right. Um, let's take a look. What's the deal? There's contents for you to get through. There's examples for you to get through. And then there's exercise for you to get through. And yeah, it's got to be done in that order. Contents, examples, and then exercises. My name is Ron Bannon. This is a draft version of, of an adaption of Webster Wells' Advanced Course in Algebra that dates back to 1904. The PDF document <coughs> is only being mailed to the Prison Mathematics Project participants. All right? This document will be published at a later date. For the teachers and students look, looking at these videos that are interested in getting a copy of it, please email me. My ad uh, email address is Bannon, that's B as in boy, A N N O N dot U S. All right, so I'm going to kind of look through it, and someone says, you know, do you know what's in this content? I bet it's something to do with the past, but you, you want to go forward, all right? The past is, needs to be understood, at least partially understood, to move forward. So it says discussion of problems involving quadratic equations with one unknown, all right? So I'm going to say, hopefully you read through that and you made some sense out of it. These can be very difficult. I'm not saying they're going to be easy for you, all right? So, well, it looks like there's some graphing here too, right? That's not bad. Let's take a look. All right. So what I'm, I'm going to read it to you. And certainly as I'm reading these things over here, it's nice if you can understand what you've read. But a lot of times you're reading these things, it's like, a, it's like a puzzle. But it says, let it be required to find two real numbers whose sum is 10. So what I'm going to say over here is the two real numbers are x and y. And what do I know about those two numbers? They tell me they add to 10. All right. So let it be required to find two real numbers whose sum shall be 10. That's written down. But then they say their product. Let me write this down. Their product, the two numbers are x and y, by the way, is 26. Well, you know what? What I want to do is I want to eliminate one of the letters in the problem. And the way I'm going to do that is take this equation here and solve it for y. And what's y going to be equal to? 10 minus x. Now, I'm going to write that down for you. So it's going to be x times y. Well, y now is 10 minus x is equal to... Well, 26. Well, let's write this down. What do you get? 10x minus x squared equals 26. Well, I'm going to have to solve that for 0, right? So you get 0 equals x squared. I like the coefficient on the square term to be positive. Minus 10x plus 26. And certainly I'd love to solve that. And the way I'm going to do that is try to factor it. So it's going to be x and x. And the 26 could be 2 and 13. That wouldn't work. 26 and 1, uh, nothing's going to work. So i gotta, I got to say to myself that, it, that if it's not working, you know, you can complete the square. I don't do that now. All right, so let's take a look. You get 0 equals x squared minus 10x. I'm going to complete the square. How do you complete the square on that guy? Well, you take half of minus 10, which is minus 5 squared, you get 25. Well, I need a 26, so I would just say plus 1. So this guy over here, really easy to do. What are you going to get? I'll write it up here. 0 equals x minus 5. Quantity squared equals 1. Whoops, I'm sorry, not equals 1. Plus 1. Let me get my eraser out. I can use the square root rule to solve that. What do you get? Minus 1 equals x minus 5 squared. What does that mean? x minus 5 equals plus or minus the square root of minus 1. What does that mean? x equals 5 plus or minus. Well, the square root of minus 1 is i, right? So what do I have? I don't have a real number. I have complex numbers, all right? So I'm going to say this can't be satisfied, all right? So no solution. I'll write that down for you. So there's no solution to this. Again, the key word was real numbers. These are not real numbers. So we conclude the given condition. I'll just read this to you. It cannot be satisfied, and the problem is impossible. Hence, imaginary complex results so that the problem is impossible. All right. This one here, I, I got to be honest with you, for a lot of students, it's just overwhelmingly difficult. All right? So my, my claim over here is that this thing is done in the text. It's a tough problem. All right. Now, I believe it's a tough problem. People say, no, it's not a tough problem. I can do that really easily. I'm going to claim that what you really need to do is read the content again. 
all right? Look at my work, read the content again. Not only is it tough to do, but it's tough to understand the outcome of it, all right? So I gotta be honest, it's really long complicated, but you can do that if you wanna read through that. It's good to think through things though. All right, this one says graph. Now certainly when I graph something, when Wells does graph something, it might be a little bit difficult, all right? Or I should say difficult, but different. So what I'm gonna do over here is, I, I always do this by the way. I look for what's called easy points. So I'm gonna write this over here. So y equals, and I'll tell you what the easy points are. The first thing I would try to do is, if I could factor it, I would wanna factor it. If it's not easy though, I, I, I probably would say, no, I'm not gonna deal with that. So what would you get over here? You'd get x, I'll, do, I'll put this on a variety of ways by the way. Uh, it looks like three and one, right? And I put down, let's see, minus three plus one. All right, that's one thing I could do. I could write it that way. And I'll talk about why I'd write it that way. The other thing I could do is I complete the square. Let me put that down for you. So x squared minus 2x. Well, half of minus 2 is minus 1. Squared is plus 1. And then I put minus 4 over here. Why is that? 1 minus 4 is minus 3. So what does this give me? This gives me x minus 1 squared minus 4. So, you know, I got, I got a ton of things to deal with. And when I say a ton of things, a ton of the easy things to deal with. For example, I can now discuss the x-intercepts. I can now discuss the y-intercept. Now, if you remember the prior sections, I can also discuss the minimum point. Let's do one thing at a time. I'm going to do the y-intercept first, and I believe it's easy. All you have to do is set x to be 0, and what would you get for y minus 3? We'll plot the point later. Now, what's the y-intercept? I'm sorry, x-intercept, I misspoke. It's going to be the zeros of the problem, which is going to occur at 3, 0, and the other one's going to be minus 1, 0. What's the minimum point? The minimum point here is going to occur at 1, comma, minus 4. I'm now ready to put it down, all right? Now, when I graph something, you might be shocked that my graphs does not look as good as a machine can do, and you shouldn't be shocked by that. But let me just check things out if I'm writing things down correctly for you. I'm just outlining what I have over here. It says your graph should look similar to mine. Well, I'm going to put my graph down. It's probably not going to look good, but I'll put a graph down. Let's see, 3, 0. That's a dot. Minus 1, 0. That's a dot. I'm going to go 3 down now. And then I get a point 1 minus 4 right over here. Now, I hope you realize as you're reading through the notes here that these graphs look like a cup. That's called a parabola, by the way. Now, granted, let me go to the key. Now, I want to point out much nicer, much nicer, much nicer, much nicer. I do want to point out one feature that's not down here, and that's going to be some kind of line of symmetry. What am I talking about? This is an axis of symmetry here. We abbreviate that AOS. And what's that going to be? It appears to be x equals, always going to be equal to 1. This point over here is a special name. This is the vertex. This is the y-intercept. This is one of the x-intercepts, and that's the other x-intercept. All right, let's go to the next one. It says graph it. And again, it's going to look at it and see if I can factor it. And sometimes you can't factor it, but I'll give it a try. x minus 2 squared. What else could I do? I could write it down by completing the square. Let's put this down. x squared minus 4x, half of minus 4 is going to be two, minus 2 squared, you get 4. Well, it's already a perfect square, as we know. x minus, whoops, sorry about that. All right, I got that part covered. All right, now the question, why do you do that? Well, I want to answer some questions about this now. What kind of question I want? Well, I think the y-intercept is probably the easiest one to put down. What's the y-intercept? Set x to equal 0. 
then you can get four. X-intercepts. Well, I want to point out, this is X minus two, X minus two. So there's actually two, but they're identical. Two, zero, and two, zero. I also want to come up with what's called a minimum point. What's the minimum going to be? Well, I'm looking at this thing over here to get that. All right, what's it going to be? It occurs when X is two, and what would the Y be? Zero. I'm going to graph it, and just a really kind of crude graph, but I will look at the picture later. Before I do that, though, I want to make sure you know that we're writing down this stuff over here. All right, so y-intercept, 0, 4, x-intercepts, 2, 0, 2, 0, and a minimum point, 2, 0. I'm going to graph it. Really crude, by the way. Let's see, y-intercepts are 4, right? x-intercepts are 2, and it occurs twice. I'll put it down twice. Minimum points, the same point. And I'm going to say you got a symmetry line over here. This is an axis symmetry. What's that going to be? X equals 2. And this looks like a cup. Again, not looking great, by the way, but good enough for me. All right. This is also called a vertex over here. Let's look at the picture. That says figure 50 on page 982. <coughs> I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it. Let me put this over here. And I'll label this for you. This is the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is x equals 2. This is a vertex. The vertex is a point, 2 comma 0. I want to point out you can blow up a PDF if you can't see well. Right? This is not only a vertex over here, this is also an x-intercept. What's this thing over here? It's a y-intercept. What's the general shape of this? basically look like a cup. It's called a parabola. It goes up forever. All right, let's go to the next one. And this one, um, you know, if you try to factor it, you're not going to get it factored, right? But that, that shouldn't stop you from trying, by the way, but you're not going to get it factored. So what I want to do is I want to complete the square on it. So x squared plus x. I take half of 1, which is, um, is 1 half, and square out, I get a quarter, right? And I need a 2, so it's going to be what? Uh, let's see, what would you need there? That would be 7 quarters, right? So what's this going to be? x plus 1 half squared plus 7 quarters. All right, now so why would you do that? Well, I think the reason to do that is to find the minimal point on this. All right, when's the minimal point going to occur? It's going to be the minimal point. Minimal point occurs when x is minus 1 half. And what would the y value be? Seven quarters. All right? Now, again, someone said, what about those x-intercepts? Well, I, I guess we could just square that form, but I'm not going to go there. I couldn't factor it. But we'll talk about it. And what else can I get? I get y-intercept, right? What's y-intercept? Well, when x is zero, you get two. But what I want to do is I want to try to plot it. And we'll look at the good picture later. So first thing I do is the zero, two down, right? And then I'm going to put this point down. And I want to point out minus 1 half is between 0 and minus 1 and 7 quarters, right? Well, that's going to be 1 and 3 quarters. So it's over here somewhere. Whoops, I made a mistake there. You know what? i got to blow this thing up because it just doesn't look right. And what did I say? 0, 2 and then minus one half, and up over here somewhere. I'll put the line of symmetry in. It's gonna go through that vertex. This is the vertex. Now what do you notice drawing that in? Like this over here. The x-intercepts are not real, they're complex. There's two of them, by the way. Let's take a look at the picture. And when I look at the picture, it's gonna be a much better picture. Picture's over here. I see this. That was my y-intercept. This is the vertex. I'll write this down. Vertex. What was that? Minus one half. Seven quarters. And that's one and three quarters, by the way. This screen opens up. And what else can I say about this? I could put the axis symmetry in. AOS is 
x equals minus one half. And again, these pictures are much better than the ones I do at chicken scratch work. That's number five. I'm going to scroll around. Oh, by the way, I, I, again, I, I'll keep repeating this to you. We write these answers down for you. The vertex or the minimal point, right? And we put the uh, y-intercept down. And, and then the graph is over there for you. We just we'll covered that. Okay, great. We're done with that. So it was some, um, some problems there that you study, those, uh, those examples. Then you get busy with the exercises. What are the exercises going to be? They're going to be a reflection of this problems that we've just done. You know, so hopefully you can get through these things over here. And again, I provide some work, and I do provide graphs for you. Again, the graphs are clearly labeled at the figure and the page number it's on. And you'll see I put a lot of pictures down for you. All right? So get through that. It's tough, though. You get through it. It's work, and work is going to take time. Don't be discouraged if it's taking a long time to get through the problem sets. I also uh, took time to get through the problem sets as well. All right, SAGE, what is it? Computer algebra system. You've heard this a million times, though. CAS, it's open source software. Go to this website over here. You can download or do the interactive virtual application. We recommend that you try to do these things uh, using SAGE, if you're interested, all right? Now, granted, if you do find errors in my notes, please reach out to me. Uh, my email address is uh, b as in boy, a n n o n dot u s. And thank you for paying attention.